Huh, I wonder how things are going on in the rest of the world today. Huh, CNN would probably call that fiery, but mostly peaceful, as of course that was Russia simulating a nuclear strike on Ukraine with their intercontinental ballistic missiles, which of course weren't armed with nuclear warheads. Luckily, as of course, this also highlights specifically how the Western powers, NATO, the United States and Ukraine also were able to, of course, not prevent those strikes from happening, sending a larger signal to the world that was just codified by Vladimir Putin, who made some very interesting statements on the world stage just a few moments ago in the making of this video that, of course, we will be playing to you in just a little bit. As the Netflix version of everything that we're going through right now definitely is going to be extremely biased, and that's not what you're going to find here on this independent media broadcast, as there's a lot of secretive, weird, behind-the-scenes deals being made right now, as it's fair to say here that Elon Musk and Donald Trump are doing everything in their power right now in order to bring peace to the world, while other forces that are directly opposed against them are doing the exact opposite of that. As just a couple moments ago, we got a purview into some of the backroom dealings, shady behavior, extortion, and usurping of the will of the American people as U.S. Congressman Matt Gates just officially withdrew his nomination for the Attorney General of the United States. A major blow towards America first populist style form of political leadership as he represented someone who broke a lot of scandals, who talked about a lot of very key important issues, especially when it came to, of course, you know, the Epstein saga and others that really did represent himself as a larger threat against the system. And it looks like the system has won as he has now officially announced that he no longer will be the future attorney general of the United States. Announcing that his confirmation was becoming a distraction for the critical work that Trump and Vance was doing as the corporate media was drudging up old allegations against him that the DOJ didn't even prosecute him for. As I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of other more salacious, more egregious and criminal cases in Washington, D.C. that never get dealt with, along with individuals like John Bolton that literally came out and when describing a portion of the government budgets being cut, he announced, you know what, that would be a great way to increase the defense budgets. As he represents the voice for the military industrial complex that of course I think is really behind a lot of the major maneuvers and larger escalations happening right now, specifically with Russia and Ukraine. Look, M Musk may have a big, big role here. It's not entirely clear what Trump is gonna do with this Department of Government Efficiency. If we can save a couple hundred billion dollars, I'd be delighted we can spend it on the defense budget, which desperately needs an increase. Yeah, those guys have been getting huge sums of money with no bid contracts, with no competitive bids, price gouging us, overcharging us. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know those guys that are surrounded by mountains of gold? Yeah, those guys need more money. As a lot of other individuals like Elon Musk and uh, others disagree with that. That's it's also important to note here the role that Elon Musk is playing with the future Donald Trump presidency. As we got news a couple of days that Elon Musk actually joined President-elect Donald Trump with his phone call with the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky with their larger discussions on ending their war with Russia. It's also important to note here Elon Musk has played a major role in this war as he has allowed Ukraine satellite capabilities with Starlink that has allowed them to keep advanced military and drone systems up and running in a very proficient way as the ukrainians previously attacked him for not helping enough even though he has helped out tremendously as the scuttlebutt the rumors that we're getting from these larger conversations between trump musk Zelensky, is that all of the parties involved were trying to end the war as Zelensky even came out after this phone call and announced that the war will end sooner with Trump as president. This as the Ukrainians are facing some very difficult situations on the front lines of their conflict. And it definitely does seem like there are some other underhanded kind of activities being done by them and by other invested parties here that are trying to prevent and sabotage any larger prospects of peace. As there are many parody and real accounts on social media saying specifically, we need Trump in ASAP. We need peace, not war. As a lot of countries are preparing for war, not just in Europe, countries like North Korea, 
that told its military to get prepared for larger conflicts between them and South Korea. And we have to note what we just saw unfold in Dipro, Ukraine, specifically is highlighting ICBM warheads arriving on target with Russia, sending a larger signal to the United States, to the military industrial complex, to the real people that pull the strings at the Pentagon, not Joe Biden, that they are also willing to escalate. But also, more importantly, they just showed their capabilities of being able to send nuclear warheads and bombs, missiles capable of carrying out those specific strikes against Western targets that, of course, cannot be defended against them. As Ukraine is saying that these were ICBMs, U.S. officials are describing these missiles as short-range IRBMs, intermediate-range ballistic missiles, as air raid alarms were ringing all throughout Ukraine last night, expecting this larger retaliation, which was largely a symbolic gesture by the Russians that are signaling to the West that they're ready to escalate further from here, with other grave statements made by Vladimir Putin that were also very escalatory as Vladimir Putin literally laid out the argument and his justification saying that he is justified when it comes to striking other countries that are producing, manufacturing, and making these missiles that are being brought into Ukraine and then, of course, shot into their country and territory. As Putin has announced that Russian forces have carried out a combined strike on one of the military industrial facilities in Ukraine as they tested one of their novel intermediate-range missile systems, announcing that the objectives of the launch have been, quote, met. As Putin even laid out his argument how this proxy war is becoming a direct conflict and how escalations will only follow from here. I'd like to inform the Russian citizens and our friends around the world, as well as those who still nurture illusions that a strategic defeat can be inflicted against Russia, about events that are happening in the Special Military Operation Zone. I'm talking about what happened in the wake of long-range Western weapons being used in the Special Military Operation Zone. As a result of the escalation, in the United States and their NATO allies said that they give their permission to use long-range weapons against targets inside Russia. Experts know fully well, and the Russian side has underscored this time and again, that using such weapons without the direct involvement of military operators from manufacturing countries is impossible. As Russia is also threatening to attack my home country of Poland in response to all of this, as the Russians are arguing that now it could strike the U.S. bases that are using and producing and shipping in these advanced weapon systems, as it's fair to say here that the rhetoric is uh, heating up in all the wrong possible ways. As the United States has just opened up a new ballistic missile defense base inside of Poland, which according to the Russians will increase the overall level of nuclear danger, as the Russians have announced that they are actually adding it to the list of potential targets for Russia. All of this is Poland is set to deliver their 45th support package to Ukraine as the Polish prime minister made a dig at the German government that also was recently involved with a phone call with Vladimir Putin. This as the Ukrainians aren't left with a lot of options as of course they just used these missiles. The Russians just used other advanced missile systems and now we have another escalation that of course brings us closer towards a potential all-out nuclear exchange as of course it's only a matter of time since of course we keep advancing the escalations here we keep using more advanced systems we keep using more things that push the line further and further cl closer to mutually assured destruction as uh, there's not many outs for the ukrainians here that really do not want to give up their territory as even in the kursk region it looks like there's a larger stalemate in that larger potential conflict that of course is unfolding right now as there is still ongoing fighting on russian territory from the ukrainians that invaded the country this as a lot of their more heavily equipped advanced military fighting forces have been put in that particular location all the while the Russians are making very slow advance moves in the Donbass region, highlighting their kind of slow crawl and advance towards more of Ukrainian territory that they are just kind of 
taking up as it looks like this whole Kursk offensive was specifically done in a way to put Donald Trump at a larger disadvantage from being able to negotiate a lot of peace deals here as the Ukrainians were arguing that Elon Musk should be giving them Starlink in order to attack Russian territory, which of course Elon Musk refused, saying specifically Starlink is only to be used for defensive purposes and the Ukrainians literally launched a full all-out attack on him since he didn't allow Starlink to attack deep into Russian territory and also the Crimea region, which is territory that is still occupied under Russian control. This as the United States is also preparing and readying their nuclear weapons. As of course, if you're the Ukrainians, right, and, and, and you know the Russians are retaliating and you see all of their kind of advanced missile aircraft and offensive kind of capabilities being put to the front lines, you see missiles that could be nuclear weapons flying your way. You are in a situation that is extremely stressful to deal with as the situation gets ever so complicated and dangerous for everyone involved here, including a lot of the people here that are just saying, hey, could we not do this? As the people overwhelmingly voted for Donald Trump because he promised to end the wars. And ever since elected, it looks like the old regime and Joe Biden, not really, he's just a puppet, but the old regime that is soon to be ousted is just trying to restart it, re-engage it in all the worst possible ways. As The Hill even reported that World War III is now Trump's to lose. As they are describing a situation where people will now judge him whether or not he wins World War III. As they're arguing, we're already in it. Are we going to lose it? Or are we going to win it? As they talk about how it's very troubling that uh, Trump wants peace here. And, and again, this is the type of temperament and attitude of, of a sociopath, of a crazy, insane individual who wants to see the world burn. As this piece is probably written by the military industrial complex that has an invested interest here in continuing and expanding and prolonging this war. As Germany just issued a chilling warning to its citizens as the German defense minister has warned that Russia poses a military and hybrid threat, as the Express writes that it was an apocalypse warning to its citizens. This as the German economy really isn't doing that well, as of course they have definitely sabotaged themselves through a lot of very kind of woke liberal leftist policies that uh, literally got rid of their own nuclear reactors. And uh, combine that with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline being uh, blown up, by the Ukrainians and other Western forces. They are um, in a bit of a crisis, not just uh, with their energy sector, but their larger kind of sphere of influence, as they are also being heavily criticized for talking to Vladimir Putin, which again, I don't see that as, as a wrong thing. Countries should talk to each other. We should prevent larger conflicts. We should bring in de-escalatory negotiations that could potentially end all of this since we're being put to the brink of utter annihilation. And before we're all annihilated, don't forget to get your uh, vitamins and supplements that might make you survive. A couple seconds, maybe even a couple minutes longer during the nuclear fallout that potentially we're facing. And again, I don't mean to be sensationalistic and hyperbolic, but the fact that the world is being brought closer to this, especially during a key time of a transition of power between Biden and, and Trump right now, is extremely significant and probably does play at some larger kind of power play being moved here against Donald Trump, telling him to stay in line or else they threaten to literally blow up their entire world many times over. And uh, that's something that, of course, is just based off my speculation. But I think it's one based on reality after, of course, covering this for over 20 plus years, seeing everything kind of develop and build up to where we are right now, we have been calling it correctly for a very long time. For many years on end, people are like, oh, you're crazy. This is not going to happen. There's no way what you're saying is going to happen. And it does. You go back. You go back through our YouTube channel. You see all the stuff that we predicted. You see all the stuff that we've been calling out. You see all the stuff that we saw brewing here before anyone else did. And uh, you tell us we're wrong because you won't. You won't be able to do that at all, specifically with our larger geopolitical updates that we've been covering here for a very long time. This is our forte. This is something we've been listening to. This is something we have the pulse on for a very long time. And if you appreciate it, support us. One easy way to support us is through, of course, wearechange.shop. I facetiously made a joke earlier. But a lot of our products, a lot of our supplements are top notch. Some of the best stuff out there, especially if you want to take your own health into your own hands. We have information about every single product in the top right-hand corner from a video that you could watch just by clicking the link here. And whatever you're interested 
in, whether it's fish oils. We got some of the best fish oils out there. By the way, we got another product on takecalm.com. Absolutely best product on the market there. Something that I've We've been looking into researching and testing personally myself for over two plus years and uh, take calm.com. This, this stuff right here, best stuff on the market and my hat fell. Surely uh, something that of course is revolutionary, life-changing and I have implemented and have been taking for a very long time. I like taking this stuff. It helps me out with a lot of different things, especially dealing with seeing exactly what's going on here, warning everyone that it's happening, being called crazy. And then being proven right. Yeah, you're going to need some TakeCalm.com after that. Magnesium glycinate also helps you sleep at night. I like it a lot. But my favorite and the first product we ever launched was, of course, ashwagandha. It's not right for everyone. Make sure to talk to a medical professional before taking anything into your body. There's some people that just shouldn't take it. But if you do your own research and you think you should be taking it, it's great for stress, great for testosterone, elevated moods, energy and just an overall well-being. I take it one month out of the year. I like to take breaks. You shouldn't be dependent on, on supplements. It's good to get your blood work done. It's good to take an active approach on your own personal health, as, of course, we're going to need it when we all get drafted. <laughs> I can't help it. Hey, if you want to outrun the, the, the Chai Kam Iranian Ruski drones that are going to be kamikaze into you, if you want to dodge, those incoming um, grenades coming your way. You're going to need all the health you can get. Get that help right now. We are change.shop. We appreciate you guys supporting us. As of course, a lot of different things are also happening in this world that we never still got into. As the International Criminal Court just issued an arrest warrant for this prime minister here for crimes against humanity. Most of the American public has shifted to the right as there are a lot of promises being made right now by a government that isn't even in power yet that a lot of powerful people don't want to see implement their policies. And I think that's why we saw Matt Gates get ousted today. Again, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy promised to reform government as they probably will be attacked soon as well. There's an onslaught of just major media attacks and underhanded intelligence agency attacks against all of Trump's kind of picks. And it probably is rooted to a lot of the larger kind of corporate interests that don't want to lose all of their power and influence that they have over federal government. Google is probably going to be divested too, as they are some major antitrust plans against it, which of course uh, will uh, not make it uh, too much of a happy company out there. As it's fair to say, there are some uh, good people trying to work behind the scenes in order to create a ceasefire, in order to create a major peace deal. And there's a lot of underhanded efforts in order to stop them. Who will win? Let me know down in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys subscribing. Stay tuned for this particular independent media broadcast. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on youtube.com forward slash we are change.